Building the plaster shell for our rubber mold is very similar in process to actually building a rubber mold. Again, we separate the sections using clay walls so that we can make separate sections of a plaster shell that will demold easily from the rubber. Take your time here in setting up your keys. Everything must be drafted so the plaster can separate from every section. Mold release must be applied to the urethane rubber. Even though the plaster will not stick to it, this just eases in the initial demolding of the plaster shell from the model. In this case, the mold release use is Vaseline. It will guarantee that the plaster will not stick to the rubber or the clay walls. You sift your plaster carefully into the bucket of water, allowing the plaster to thoroughly soak up the water and mix completely. After cutting burlap into 12 inch squares, we are now ready to make the plaster shell section. We apply a first coat of plaster very thinly over the entire section about to be molded. This again is our print coat for the shell. After that, we soak the pieces of burlap in the plaster and apply it over the model surface. The burlap gives strength to the plaster so that the shell will be strong and will last a long time. After our plaster shell sections are complete, we add additional reinforcement in the form of electrical conduit. Take your time using a pipe bender to bend the conduit to conform to the shape of the shell. Conduit pieces are held in place using small pieces of clay until they are locked in place using plaster and burlap. Prior to applying the plaster wetted out burlap, wet the area that you will be sticking it on. This allows for a good bond between the plaster shell and the new burlap being applied. Use lots of strip of burlap all over the shell to lock the conduit in place. These become your lifting points for transporting the mold shell. After our plaster is cured completely, we use a drill to drill small air holes throughout the plaster shell. This allows us to break the seal, locking the parts together. Then we take a sureform file and use it along the edges of the shell sections. This allows us to find the edge between the two parts of the shell. Using small wooden wedges all over the shell, we separate the different sections of the shell. Once the shell sections have separated, using a hoist or some additional help, we pull the sections of the shell off the rubber mold.
Have we have properly released our model during the mold making process, we see that the rubber sections of the mold peel off quite easily in the demolding process. Preparing the mold for fiberglass layup requires mold release all over the surface of the rubber mold. In addition, we use two inch wide masking tape around the borders of the mold to protect the plaster from the mold release and from the fiberglass. This will make it easier in demolding different fiberglass segments afterwards. Again, we apply three coats of wax to the entire surface of the mold section prior to doing the gel coat. After mixing the gel coat as per the manufacturer's instructions, we pour it on over the rubber mold. This is almost like a thick coat of paint and it acts as our surface coat, or again, a print coat for the surface of the final casting. You must ensure complete coverage over the entire surface of the rubber mold. Take your time and get into every little detail. After the gel coat has cured to a tacky state, it is now time to apply the fiberglass mat. Taking small sections of mat, we apply them all over the surface of the rubber mold onto the gel coat. After we coat the entire surface of the mold with the chopped strand mat, making sure that everything is covered, we then use laminating resin to wet out the chopped strand mat. Take your time and be careful. Make sure that there are no air bubbles in the laminate. There's a lot of surface area here and you must be careful. Working out the air bubbles is critical to ensure a good final casting. We apply three layers of fiberglass mat to the mold. After we have completed laying up the fiberglass in the different sections of the mold, it is now time to join the mold sections together. We clean up the edges of the mold sections so that there will be a nice clean locking together of the mold sections. Using clamps, we bolt everything together so we get a nice tight surface. As you can see, our two sections line up well together. Using gel coat, we go over the seam line to fill in the gap between the two sections. Afterwards, we begin applying sections of chopped strand mat over the joint. In applying three layers of chopped strand mat, 
we will provide a joint that is stronger than the rest of the laminate in actuality and give us a solid fiberglass casting. Take your time, work it into the joint, make sure everything is laid out and wet it out completely. After we remove the clamps from the separate sections of the mold, we begin to work the rubber off the fiberglass casting. Make sure you have enough people around to help you remove all the pieces as this is a very large mold. Take your time and carefully peel off the rubber as you want to use this mold over and over again. As you can see, like a puzzle, all the pieces fairly easily pop off different sections of the fiberglass casting. And in the end, we have a fiberglass statue, ready for final cleanup and preparation for painting. After we have removed the fiberglass casting from the mold, it is time to do the finishing work on it to prepare it for painting. Using auto body putty and finishing putty, we fill in any minor imperfections over the surface of the model. Basically you treat a fiberglass statue like you would a fiberglass car body. We apply coats of primer, and after the coats of primer, we apply our coats of paint. And as you can see, we have a finished statue that looks just like marble and is ready to be put on display.